Nick Foxcroft, Silver Salmon, Team Energy Power Sports. It's uh, the kickoff to our 2023 season and uh, first day of boat in the water and uh, yeah, it's a great start. We um, just down here in the Niagara area, actually right off the uh, river mouth right now. I think today, not only today, this year, I think we're going to put a bit more focus on Kind of some of the rigs we run and just a little more of the operations of the boat you know last year we like to uh, touch on the tournaments as as you all know we're we're a big uh big fan of fishing and all those events putting our uh sometimes talents on the line but uh yeah this year i think we're, we're going to touch a bit more on different times of year uh different programs are running and uh, i think today is a really good start as spring is quite different than our summer program. So let's take a look at uh, our operation of the back there and uh, kind of go over a few things. So while Aiden's rigging in this lead core here, we'll just kind of go over a few things. So I've grown up fishing the North Shore of Lake Ontario. Guided since the late 90s and then um, became pretty interested in the tournament scene. Uh, we've been fishing the tournament circuit now, geez, for about 15, 18 years on top of that. And I guess a big part of our program is using our guiding techniques and all, also implicating them into our tournament angling. Um, you know, obviously, guiding gives you a lot of opportunity to be out in the water uh, you know it's a, it's a bit different of an approach as, as, as you're fishing for your clients and um, catering to their needs but you know we all enjoy getting into some good fish and honestly it, it's great rooting on the clients to bring in those fish so I guess today we're out here in the energy boat we're going to kind of touch on a bit of an in-between um, you know tournaments coming up in a couple days here so we're pre-fishing actually first day out in the lake with, with the Illumicraft here and uh, it's been a great start to be honest um, you know spring it has its pros and cons and uh, you know it's cold <laughs> you're uh, often fishing cold water so you know it, it, obviously we dress appropriately but with that cold water kind of offers some excitement as these kings usually fight in the hardest they, they ever do all year um, a few of the techniques we'll, we'll touch on now but again it allows us to fish a little bit different than we would midsummer in, in this colder water. And to be honest, one uh, one big part I do enjoy is uh, is running braids on the rivers. What do you got there, Aiden? Oh, that's the laker. Lake trout, nice. Yeah, they are pretty common out here on the Niagara Bar, but uh, tend to release those guys, get them back over, and. Uh, So yeah, let's, let's come over here to our riggers and kind of touch on a bit of uh, what we got going on there. So like I mentioned, spring cold water, fish at a 42 degree surface. Um, stuff you don't really find in the summer, so it allows us to run braid. Is it a big deal? Not sure, it depends how you look at it. But obviously we don't have fleas in the water now, so we're not worried about gumming up the lines. Um, it allows us to have a direct, no stretch approach while we're fighting our fish, which I find allows you to handle them a bit better, which is pretty helpful in tournaments. You know, um, getting into the fish gets hot and heavy, double headers. You want to be able to maneuver your fish, move them around and, uh, and control them, bring them into the boat. So, one part I will touch on when running braid, we'll tip it with about a 30 to 40 foot lead of fluorocarbon. And uh, the reason we go that long, you want to clip your clips into the, into the fluorocarbon. Braid, it will tend to slip out. You know, we like to run pretty short leads, maybe 10, 12 foot. So that 30 foot lead gives us enough length that we can clip that in there, be confident that it's not going to give us a false release and then we're set with our braid. So again, mandatory, no, but it definitely has its advantages uh, in the spring. So a typical setup for us, you know, we're often out here in a tournament or for ourselves with three on board, which allows us uh, in the Canadian waters to allow 
us to fish six rods, two poles per person. So we like to put out um, a variety of, uh, of approaches. Obviously we have our riggers, which we just touched on. We'll run our dipsies and our lead cores. Um, I, I find different days the fish are hot on different rigs. You know, you, you, your riggers are going hot one day, they go cold, dipsies are firing up, and, and for me, lead core. Um, since the day I met it, I've, I've always enjoyed fishing with lead core. It just gets the lines away from the boat midday when the bite slows down, the lead cores uh, tend to pick up, and it's, it's, it's a go to for us, honestly. It's, it's a big deal to have in the spread. You know, we'll even sometimes pull out our dipsies or riggers to load up more on the leads just to get our lines further out. So, braid, braid back in our lead core. This one here is an eight color. And then on our dipsies, we'll run the wire. It's not necessary to run wire. Um, you know, it's an exciting fight. There you go. As we just said, the wire odds, an exciting fight. You can see the rod tip there. Every movement of that fish, you could feel it right through. So again, it gives you more control, but it is an enjoyable way to go about it. And braid isn't much different. You know, there's not much stretch in braid. Wire will actually allow you to get some baits a little deeper as it's thinner diameter. So we turned on wire many years back, and um, yeah, we haven't turned back since. So let's see what we got here. So just a touch on the lead cores. Um, again, running spoons today. I'll put about a 30 foot lead, 30 to 40 foot fluorocarbon lead. I like to use a, a more flexible fluorocarbon. Um, use a uni knot, tie it to our lead core. Uh, you know, we, we could touch on the knots down the way, but primarily we're running a six color here. Little sticker, kind of helps when you're pulling it out of the rod rack to know what you're uh, bringing down. So I'll run it out. We'll get the full six colors out and then uh, I'll show you what, uh, what planer boards we use and how we uh, clamp them on. So we've put the full six color lead core out and uh, for backing we run 30 pound braid. Again, that same uni knot. And then Aiden there is going to pass me the planer board. Perfect. And what we're using today is uh, the Dreamweaver Ninja boards. These guys did, did some great work with them to make it single-handed use, you know. Um, push the trigger, and you're locked in. And what we'll do is we'll just run them down the center of the boat, get about 30, 40 feet back, and then apply pressure, and it will start pulling out to the one side. I find it just gives you a little more distance over your dipsies. Um, Toss it in here until she straightens out and she'll pull out to the one side and then they have the opposite. The, the Dreamweaver Ninja boards have a left and a right and they'll pull depending on which side of the boat you're trying to get it out on. Again, run the drag just enough to hold it in place but typically when uh, the fish hit the, the lead cores they pull, they go hard the other way so you don't want your drag set too tight as you don't want to break off in the beginning. So, you know, just enough to keep it in place. If it's a rougher day, you might have to tighten it up a little bit so you don't keep on getting those trickles on all the waves. But here we go, this is our setup, and so far it's been doing pretty good. So Aiden's battling another lake trout here. Um, and to be honest, we've gone through a few, and that's why he's sitting down. Uh, you know, they, they, uh, the way the lake trout kind of fight through a troll is um, mouth open wide, spinning with, it, with a lot of drag. And um, it, it, it's a big part of the spring fishery, especially, you know, us pre-fishing for the King of the Lake coming up this weekend. Sometimes you got to pick through those lake trout, and, and the salmon are mixed in amongst them. Um, We've had some good seasons where we've literally gone five to one, go through the Lakers to get one king, and you just pick through them. So don't get discouraged. A lot of times the kings are mixed in with them. Uh, they'll definitely 
often have different bite times. You know, that first light bite I, I always find is, is best for kings. And again, that 11 o'clock bite. And those Lakers typically chew throughout the whole day. So um, don't get discouraged, you know, if you're getting kings in there and you just gotta kinda work through it and build up those arms and uh, we'll see if Aiden makes it through the day because this is, uh, it's gotta be near a dozen he's pulled in in the past little bit. So everyone's got their preference for netting, of course. Um, you know, some things I carry over from my uh, guiding is I like to use the net as a shield, especially with these lake trout. You know, often you get uh, a single hook in the lip, which is uh, pretty uh, vulnerable if it comes flying out. So I'll actually just follow the rod tip with the net just in case uh, it does come flying out. You can just see there we got uh, got the fish coming to the surface and just very typical for a lake trout, just kind of mouth open wide, just giving up, but you know, the boat's trolling so it's a bit of a drag, but uh, so I like the shield, do our scoop, and again, no need bringing them all the way in the boat, you know, the fish is secure there, and uh, the boga grip which we enjoy using, I like to just kind of lift the fish before going in for the hooks, you know, the, the fish is a little more subdued. If you could just pass the pliers there, Aiden. Like I said, the fish is a little more subdued here, so it gives us a little more opportunity to get those hooks out without a frail and fish. You know, bogas, they also have a weight on them, so, you know, if you're looking to gauge your weight, there you go, you're up about 14. And then the lake trout, in this shallow depth, it's not very necessary. Just torpedo them in. Aiden's bringing in the last few rods there, so we're going to call it a day. But um, like and subscribe us on our YouTube channel and toss us a comment. And honestly, if you're looking for any other information or a little more detail on any of the techniques we shared today, you know, we're glad to uh, glad to share how we go about it. Not saying our way is the right way, but it's the way uh, we, we've fished this lake over the years. <laughs>